My name is Justin Wagner. I'm the Extension Beef Cattle Specialist with K-State located in Garden City, Kansas. And today I'm going to be discussing nutrition and management of early wean calves. This is a topic that I've been involved with several research projects with over the past few years with several colleagues at the Ag Experiment Station in Hayes. And so what I'm going to be sharing with you today is some of the, our observations that we've learned in those trials and just some different tips to maybe help producers that maybe have a few potential reservations about early weaning beef calves. Before we get into this topic very deep, I think it's important for us to define what we mean by early weaning. And for myself, weaning at anything less than 180 days of age of a calf is what I would consider to be early weaning. Now conventionally we'd be talking about weaning calves at 180 to 220 days of age. We can implement early weaning as early as 45 days of age. For myself that's probably a little bit earlier than I would like from a practical standpoint. A frame of time for age of the calf that seems to work very well is weaning calves at somewhere between 100 to 150 days of age. In most of our research projects that I alluded to earlier, we're typically weaning calves anywhere from 115 to 120 days of age. And we've had a lot of success with those research trials in terms of the performance of those calves. So I'm very comfortable with this recommendation of anywhere between 100 to 150 days of age works very well on a number of uh, different operations in terms of early weaning calves. So there are some reservations by even seasoned cattlemen regarding early weaning calves at, at anything with an age of close to 100 days of age. A lot of time we perceive these calves are going to be lightweight, stressed, and very high health risk. And so that kind of goes along with saying that they're probably going to have a low performance potential. And I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions maybe regarding early weaned beef calves. I think our perception regarding the health of these calves comes out of the feedlot industry. A lot of times the calves that we're going to be weaning direct on the ranch, those are quite a bit different than lightweight cattle that have maybe been on a truck for 12 or 14 hours that would, would arrive at a feed yard. The calves that we're going to be dealing with are coming from a herd that likely has some sort of vaccination history. We've got ideal management. We've also got the opportunity to implement some low stress weaning protocols. So those animals are quite a bit different than maybe the lightweight calves that would be coming into a feedlot type situation. Another misconception that's out there with producers is that these calves are just simply not capable of using concentrate feeds. And we'll kind of touch on this in terms of how the rumen develops and what we can see in terms of the performance of these calves. One of the other concerns is that these calves are simply going to require greater management by an operation. And really that's true. I mean, it is going to require more management. Typically, we probably wouldn't be having a discussion about early weaning. Most producers would only consider it in terms of a drought situation where forage availability was potentially limiting. However, personally, I do think there is some lessons to be learned in terms of increasing productivity, utilizing early weaning as a management tool. There's also some facility limitations. It does require facilities to early wean beef calves in terms of maybe having some dry lot pen space or some bunk line to feed those calves or just some resources to be available. And so those, those are certainly concerns. One that, that often comes up as well, weather. A lot of times for a spring calving herd, we'd be weaning beef calves if they're at 100 to 150 days of age. We'd be looking at weaning those calves depending on when they were born sometime in July, August, and September. Well, in Kansas, that can be one of the hottest times of the year. You know, it's not uncommon for us in August to, to be in excess of 100 degrees and maybe have some pretty humid days as well. One of the things that I don't think this is maybe as great of a concern as what some producers do, we make a comparison of weather and how it impacts our weaning operations. You know, traditionally, we'd be talking about weaning calves in October. Well, in October, we can be 80 degrees one day and we could be freezing rain uh, maybe a few short days later and be having temperatures near freezing. So, you know, typically in July, August, and September, we're dealing with conditions where we're just hot and typically pretty dry. So one of the first things that I want to address is the misconception regarding the health of, of early lean calves. And this is some of the data from one of our research trials at Hayes. The graph that you have in front of you should have morbidity, which is just simply the percent of calves that were treated for some sort of illness during the feedlot. Along the horizontal axis, you have the days weaned, 60, 45, 30, 15, or zero. And this was essentially a preconditioning trial that looked at different preconditioning durations on calves. 
but as a result of the treatments we impose, we wean calves at different ages, all the way from 100 days to 160 days of age. And so what I want to point out here is basically we treated right around three and a half, 3.7 percent of the calves that we would have weaned at 100 to 115 days of age as the calves got older. The number of calves that we treated during the weaning period was numerically lower, but it was not statistically significant, so it was not significant, uh, meaning that essentially the number of calves that we treated was the same. There is quite a bit of variability in these numbers, but the health of these calves was quite good. You know, a lot of times high-risk feedlot cattle coming in that have been long hog cattle, it wouldn't be uncommon to treat 10 or 12 percent of those type of cattle upon arrival. And here we're treating far less than that at an average of somewhere in the neighborhood of around 2 percent of those calves that required some sort of medical treatment or therapeutic treatment during that, the weaning period that we imposed in that trial. So the take-home message of this is essentially our early weaned calves that were weaned from 100 all the way to 160 days of age the health of those calves was really not different and not much of an issue for us in this particular trial. So the second point of concern that I wanted to touch on today is rumen development. And so that's essentially a function of diet. It's stimulated by the presence of the volatile fatty acids within the rumens, particularly butyrate. In this slide, I've got some pictures that were taken from a Holstein calf. that will give you kind of an idea of how diet influences the development of the rumen. These were taken at six weeks of age. You can see a calf was consuming a milk only diet. Has very few papillae, if any, within the, the rumen wall structure. A calf that's been exposed to grain, so milk and grain, you can see a much, much more developed rumen. So you get milk and hay, there's a little bit more development there. And these photos were all taken at six weeks of age. So depending on the diet that that calf has been exposed to, the rumen is certainly capable of utilizing concentrate feeds. Another common question that comes up is, well, you know, those calves that are out at the side of their dam nursing, you know, how much forage are they actually consuming? Now, this is actually some older K-State data from the early 80s, from 1980. And essentially what it's got is um, calves were born from March 15 to April 2nd, so kind of a typical spring calving herd in Kansas. And this is the dry forage consumption of calves as it expresses a percent of body weight. And see, as we can see, as those calves get out later into the months of August and September, where we'd be looking at maybe implementing the early weaning program, those calves are actually consuming 1.75 to 2.2 percent of their body weight in dry forage per day. And that may come as a surprise to some producers who think that the forage intake of those calves is relatively low. They're actually consuming a fair amount of dry forage as a percent of their body weight while they're still nursing on the cow. So feeding management of early weaned calves is really important. In fact, if I had to pick one thing that is essentially the biggest take home message I could give a producer who's looking at having early weaned calves is getting those calves to consume dry feed is really imperative to success. One of the things you have to realize coming into this type of program is Newly weaned calves, regardless of if they're early weaned or they're conventional weaned at 180 to 220 days of age, they're going to be very reluctant to eat. And so as a result of that, their dry matter intake as a percent of body weight is often low. We're typically talking about intakes that would be in the range of 1 to 1.5% 1 on a dry matter basis. So if we take an early weaned calf at 100, maybe 120 days of age that weighs 350 pounds, 1% of his body weight is only 3.5 pounds of dry feed per day. And so I put together this table that essentially should hopefully give you a better sense for just how much feed those calves would be consuming. If we look at from 350 pounds all the way to 500 pounds, you know, we're only looking at 3.5 to 5 pounds of dry feed per day. And that's where we would essentially start those calves out. And then over a period of 10 to 14 days, my goal is to have those calves eating somewhere in the range of 2 to 2.5 two percent of their body weight per day. So we're starting an intake on that 350 pound calf of three and a half pounds and actually trying to move him up to consuming somewhere in the neighborhood of around eight and three quarter pounds of dry feed per day. How we do this in to give you a sense of some of the things of why dry matter intake is so important to these lightweight calves. This is some behavioral or observational data from one of our research trials in Hayes. This shows a percent of calves within a pen that were observed at the bunk when we brought them into the feedlot. And so these are calves that were exposed to three different types of treatments. We have the, the bold green line is essentially calves that were weaned in a dry lot situation. 
So these calves knew what a bunk was. They knew how to eat dry feed. We then had pasture wean calves that had fence line contact with their dam, plus some sort of a dry supplement, uh, if you will. So a grain-based type supplement that was being fed to them, and that's the blue line. So this is really a soft wean with some additional dry feed. And then we have the red line, which is pasture wean calves that had fence line contact. So it's basically kind of a soft wean with no additional supplement. So this is the percent of calves that were observed at the feed bunk when we brought them into the feedlot. What you can see is if you look at that the bold green line of the calves that we had weaned in the dry lot, they knew how to eat. When we look at the percent of them that were at the bunk, it peaked about day three. But then as we get out to day seven, there was very few of those calves that were at the bunk. Actually, there were fewer of those calves that were observed eating than calves that had really never been exposed to dry feed before the red line. So the question here is, well, what happened? Well, actually about day three, we probably got ahead of those cattle and put too much feed in front of them. And so keeping those calves aggressive is also another key management tool. We want to keep them on feed, give them something to draw them to come to the bunk. Maybe the common problems we run into with bringing calves in or any time at weaning is we don't want those calves to appear to ever be hungry. So what do we do? When the bunk's slick, we put more feed into it. Well, that's essentially what happened here about day three. And so those calves basically overate probably somewhere in that period of day two to three, maybe four. Somewhere around day five, they actually started to get a little bit of a bellyache. And by day seven, they really weren't that interested in eating. So how we manage those calves and keeping them aggressive and keeping them coming to the feed bunk is really important. So one of the protocols that we've used several times in our research trials to really standardize the management of our early wean calves and our conventional wean calves in our research trials is to really follow a pretty rigid set of steps. On the first day the calves come into the feedlot, we'll offer them a half a percent of body weight, what we call our weaning diet. It's going to be 75 to 85 percent concentrate and about a half percent of body weight of a, a really high quality grass hay. This isn't CRP hay. This would be pretty high quality hay. The feed stuff order essentially we put the diet on the bottom and the hay on the top. Basically kind of playing off the idea that these calves are probably more used to consuming hay and are going to be more interested in that. The second day, we move those calves to about 0.7% of their body weight of that dry diet and the same half percent of body weight of hay. The diet is placed on the bottom and the hay on top. We bump them by about 0.2% of body weight every day and the amount of hay stays the same at that half percent of body weight. About day four, what we do then is we switch and put the hay on the bottom of the bunk and the diet on top. Essentially, our goal here is to keep the amount of hay consistent and increase the amount of diet that they're consuming and simply using the hay to draw them into the bunk and get them used to eating. And this has worked very well for us and is a system that we've used several times for both early weaned as well as conventional weaned calves. So we need to talk a little bit about the diet and what we do really need to do with these calves. And there are some special considerations. You know, one of those would be nutrient density. As I said before, some of these calves are only going to be consuming three and a half to maybe four pounds of dry feed per day. So we've got to have a relatively nutrient dense diet to offset those low intakes. And calves have a fairly high nutrient requirement. The other challenge of this is the familiar feeds that those calves might be drawn to, like the grass hay in the previous slide that we talked about is not necessarily nutrient dense. It's going to really require some feed stuffs that would be the snicker bar type nutrients that we would put in front of them. And so the other limitation that we can run into is that newly weaned calves are probably not going to be really interested in consuming silage or maybe even some wet byproducts. Although those products a lot of operations will have on hand, we really have to watch how much silage or even how much product like wet distillers grain or gluten feed that we would consider putting into a receiving or a, a weaning diet for, for these type of calves once they come into the dry lot. In terms of important things to keep in mind, palatability is really essential. Dry matter intake is very important and so we need to put a ration in front of those calves that they're going to want to consume. We don't want that diet to be too dry or too wet. My optimum, this might be different for some others out there, in terms of moisture content would be 20 to 30 percent, which does kind of create some limitations in terms of the amount of wet byproduct that we might be able to use in that ration. The other thing we have to keep in mind is calves will sort diet ingredients. Stressed calves are actually more likely to consume concentrate feeds than forage-based feeds. They're looking for energy-dense feedstuffs in the ration. 
And so they will sort those out. And so this makes particle size and what I call ingredient aggregation of the diet more important. So essentially what we want to do is put together a total mix ration that's really going to stick together very well that those calves aren't going to be able to sort. And that can be a challenge in some situations, and we just need to be aware that those calves may try to sort out something like whole corn if we put that in there. So just keep in mind how we mix that diet, what we put in there. We may have to alter the chop length of our forages and make some special considerations for these lightweight calves coming into an operation. I do want to touch on the pen environment. Most cattlemen that have weaned calves before, especially with a hard wean situation, one of the first behaviors that we're going to see those calves exhibit is they're going to tend to walk the pen. And so a lot of times we can use this behavior that we, we can count on to our advantage by placing things within the path of those calves that they might encounter, such as the water source, the water tank, as well as setting a feed bunk perpendicular to maybe the feed bunk. Essentially what I'm trying to do with this scenario is give those calves some things that are desirable to run into as they walk around the pen. The other thing a producer might run into some situation is that some of the pens that we may want to utilize to wean calves in might be rather large pens. In our feed yard we have some pens that are rather long. For those lightweight calves a lot of times what we have done there is we'll actually use some portable panels to reduce the pen size. Then we can take those panels out once the cattle become acclimated but it keeps those calves a little closer to the bunk at least for the first few days. Usually by about day seven to eight maybe we may keep those panels in place for a few more days but our whole goal there is those calves probably don't need the entire pen space to walk around in. It just keeps them a little closer to the bunk, especially if you've got some very large pens that you would like to wean into. So here's some other just general tips on facilities. Generally, we like those calves to be pinned based on body size. Like there to be a, a weight range of no more than 50 pounds. One of the easiest ways to do this is probably to sort of just steers and heifer calves. A lot of times there's about 50 pounds difference in body weight there. Sometimes there's more. Another thing we look at, most cattlemen will sequentially tag calves based on birthday. So we can pin older calves together and younger calves together and kind of arrive at that if we don't have the ability to weigh those calves. In terms of bunk space, the number that I recommend is about 12 inches per calf. There's a few variables there in terms of how many times a day those calves can be fed. And a few other things, but typically 12 inches tends to work pretty well. We do need to give some special consideration to facilities that have been designed primarily for larger cattle. In terms of the bunk and water tank height, you know, a lot of these calves aren't going to be as tall as what an 800 pound steer would be that would be coming into the same set of pens. We also need to space maybe some special attention to some pen maintenance. A lot of times we get holes or maybe some low spots, especially off of the aprons or at the water tanks in a set of pens and so if we fill those holes in just making sure essentially that these calves that are going to weigh somewhere in the neighborhood of three to four hundred pounds actually can get up and easily reach the water tank. We talked a little bit about weather earlier. I think it's also important especially given the time of year that a spring calving herd would be looking at early weaning in response to something like drought to consider airflow and shade. Providing shade for cattle is a great thing. However, providing too little shade simply promotes crowding. My experience has been that if we give those cattle essentially a facility that has a fair amount of airflow and some room to spread out, I think we can handle some fairly warm events without having any difficulties within these calves. It, it's really, in most cases, the calves seem to tolerate it a lot better than what we think they will. So one of the, the last bullet points that I want to touch in on this short presentation was really weather. You know, a lot of people are concerned about weaning during the hotter period of the summer in terms of August, late August, and it being really extreme heat. Well, the flip side of this is we would conventionally be weaning, and this is some photos taken at one of our weaning days at Hayes. This is taken mid-October. You can see by the raincoats, it's essentially freezing rain, and I think it started to snow later on that afternoon. So the question that I would pose to the cattlemen out there, which is worse, you know, heat or freezing rain and mud? And if I had a choice between weaning calves in late August, when I knew it was going to be 100 degrees with maybe a 30 mile an hour wind in western Kansas, or a day in October where I was able to forecast that it was going to be freezing rain and I was going to have snowfall later on that evening, I know which one I would choose. I, I would much rather wean in terms of when the weather is going to be a little nicer and maybe a little more consistent. You know, another important point maybe to ask yourself as a cattleman is, why do you wean when you do? I think a lot of times we've kind of gotten into the tradition that we wean in late falls with the calves being somewhere in the neighborhood of that 200 days of age. 
there's certainly becoming more evidence that we can wean beef calves at earlier ages and have very acceptable performance and if we take into to some of the management considerations that I've mentioned today. I want to thank you for this opportunity. If you have any questions, my contact information is listed there. Um, I would certainly be happy to visit with you.